In this tutorial, we're going to look at the basics of producing reports in Flow360. Why use reports? There are various reasons why you would want to look at specific report outputs rather than simply viewing live data in Flow360 on lists. You might want to use a report to get a snapshot of the status of things at a particular date and time, and maybe optionally to keep that snapshot for future reference, so it's a fixed point in time. You want to produce maybe a sub-summary of information, and often the easiest way to sub-summarize information by different criteria in ways that are simply not possible just by sorting the lists is to produce a report. The report outputs give you many options for summarizing information. Sometimes you want to send information from Flow360 to another person, and again, using a report output for that is very useful, either in PDF format or uh, very often Excel format is useful for exchanging data and information. And sometimes you might want to produce a report in order to link that report as a PDF document in Flow360 to other objects in Flow360. So some basics about reports then. The first thing to understand is that reports are personal. When you create a report and save it, it is for your personal use only and no one else will see that report or have any access to it unless you specifically decide to save it out as a document and make it shareable with others. So any user can produce reports and they can produce reports on any data that they have access to, but very much restricted only to the data that they have access to. So a manager, for example, would be able to produce reports on any and all help desk issues or works instructions or staff qualifications across their entire organization, whereas any individual member of staff would only have access to the information that they have the right to view. Where do you access your reports? From your home screen. Uh, so we're going to do that now. I'm logged in as a manager and I'm going to go to my personal home screen and on my home screen I've got a tab that says My Reports. And if I click on the My Reports tab it will list any reports that I have generated and decided to keep. And I can review any of those reports simply by clicking the Go To button on the left of the report that I want to view. Another important thing to understand about the way reports are produced in Flow360 is that you generally work from a list of records. So typically you'll filter the list first in order to find the set of records that you want to report on, and then you'll produce the report. And we're going to have a look at doing that right now from the list of open help desk issues, active help desk issues. Because we use the filter panel, which I'm going to pop open now, you can combine any of the criteria on any of the tabs in the filter panel in order to find a specific subset of records. Now this effectively means that you can produce a report based on any of those criteria and the permutations, as you'll quickly realize, are enormous. For the purposes of this example, what I want to find is just all of the issues that are currently in progress. A very simple search. So having run the filter, I now have 105 records that are in progress, and I'm going to click here on the report button so that I can summarize that information. And I have for help desk issues, a number of different options. The one I'm interested in right now is I want to look at all of those in progress issues and see who was the caller for each of those. So I select that as the report output option and I click the confirm button and I get a list of all of those issues telling me who the caller was for each of those issues on each of those dates. Let's go back to uh, the start. So that's the key thing here. Whatever filter criteria were used to arrive at the subset of records that form the basis of any report 
are logged with the report and clearly visible in the green row at the top of the report. So if I go again back to my home and look at the My Reports tab and open up one of these reports, let's look at this help desk list report. At the top of the report, I've got a green line here which tells me the criteria that we use to get this set of records. And in this case, it was active issues, those with a target date before the 3rd of June or with no target date. And this particular report was created on the 3rd of March 2016. That information is always stored along with the report as well. So whenever you look at a report, you can see what filter criteria were used in order to create the report and also the date on time on which that report was created. Now, reports can be permanent or temporary. You've already seen by looking at the My Reports tab that we've got some reports that I've stored. And the way that I've stored those is by simply giving them a name. So let's go back to our help desk list and create another report just from the active records that are loaded here now. So I'll click on the report button. I'll make a selection here. I want to get a breakdown this time by team and person in charge. So by clicking the confirm button now, I get a report that is summarized in that way. Uh, and I can see as we scroll down the list, the catering team and then the electricians and then the general maintenance team and then the grounds team and so on. I can see of the active issues, what issues each team is dealing with and indeed within each team, if the issue has been assigned to a particular individual, I can see that information as well. Now looking at the top here, I can see where it says report title. At the moment it says temp report, then change title to save report in brackets. And it means literally that. If I change the title, this then becomes a stored report that I can revisit from the My Reports tab on my home card. If I don't do that and I move away from this report, then the report is discarded. It's no longer saved. Reports are often handy things to use in order to get a quick summary of information in ways that are not easily doable any other way. And you don't always want to save the results. But if you do, we'll simply rename it. So I'm going to rename this report. And all I have to do is take out the bit at the beginning that said temp report and I can say help desk list by team. And that is now a saved report. And if I return to the start screen and go again to my personal home record, go to the My Reports tab, I can see Help Desk List by Team is the latest report that's been saved in My Reports list. So let's review where we can find access to those report buttons. We've already seen on the Help Desk list, we have a report button at the top that gives us access to the report options for the list of help desk issues. If I go through to the Sites button, on the Sites list itself, similarly, I have a report button at the top that allows me to select from a range of reports that are to do with sites, uh, buildings, and objects in rooms. And if I drill down to the record card for a single site, Again, I have the report button here that would allow me to produce reports specifically about King's College. Similarly, on the Sections tab, I have the same icon, the Report button icon, which, if I click in this location, will give me options for reports based on this list of sections. And if I go to the Tasks tab, in the same way, I have a Reports button here on the Tasks tab list that gives me access to reports that are to do with this list of planned actions. Now, let's look at a couple of report options from a room location and just examine the choices that are on the report selector dialog when we pop that open. So from Plant Room UG19, I'm going to click the report button. And you can see I have the report selector. And if I click on the top drop down, this gives me the report choices for, in this case, areas, i.e. rooms. Underneath the report selector, I've got a direct print 
output option. This will allow me to not just produce the report, but convert the report into a PDF, which I can then save locally if I wish to, or indeed email directly from the browser. Very often, if you're just producing a report in Flow360, you don't need to select that direct PDF print output option at all. You can just leave it on none. Underneath that, we see here, ticked by default, an option that says include detailed list where appropriate. And I'm just going to show you, uh, when we look at some reports for help desk issues in a minute, exactly how that works. There's one other thing that you will sometimes see in this report selector dialog, and that happens if you select a report option that says at the end of it date range. So here's an example, areas and items list for this particular location with level history and then a date range option. And if I select that, I get an additional option here where I can specify what date range I'm interested in. So if I want a report that gives me the breakdown of all the history that relates to this location and the objects in it for the past year, then that's where I would specify how much of a date range I want to include in the report. If I want more than one year, then of course I can extend that and say, give me the last five years. And of course I can choose a smaller range than that by going to months, weeks, days, even hours or minutes if that was appropriate. One last thing I want to cover in this basic introduction to reports is how to save a report as a document in order to make it visible and shareable with other people. So I'm back on my home page, I'm looking at the My Reports tab and I'm going to drill back to my help desk list by team report that I produced a little while ago. And you can see at the top here is where I have some options for exporting this report. I can save it out to PDF, I can save it out to Excel, Word, or simply HTML, visible in a, in a browser. But if I want to store this locally and make it available as a document within Flow360 that I can then share with other people, I have another option here, which is to click that store as document tick box. I need to specify how I want this stored because this is going to create a PDF. And I'll say A4 landscape will be fine. Click OK. And that will generate a PDF version of this report, store it in Flow360, and that is now available as a document. So the tick box here now confirms that it is stored as a document. And if I go to the stored document record itself by clicking the go to button here, then I will see a PDF version of this report already stored in Flow360 as a document that I can then send to others or share or create version updates for and generally use as if it was any other type of document stored in Flow360. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of a taste for the basics of report production in Flow360. Future sessions are going to look at the specifics of reporting for particular areas of the solution. So we will look in other tutorials at help desk reports specifically, locations, sites, assets and resources, reports for works instructions, and other types of ad hoc reports and summary information.